My enthusiasm for Bitcoin stems from my general distrust of the government. I consider the US dollar and all fiat money systems to just be a really complicated system for people with power to steal from people without power. This is Being Built. I'm Aaron Davis, the founder of Reliant Search Group. We're an executive search and technical staffing firm. I'm here with David Shattuck, the creator of A Fifth of Gaming. Really cool name. Uh, Thank you. Yes, I was Glad intrigued by intrigued by the product idea when we chatted over uh, about it a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, so a fifth of gaming was uh, a project that was born from a problem that I was having in my post college years. Okay. So during undergrad, I had a collection of friends, and we all enjoyed playing video games together. So mm -hmm. Halo, World of Warcraft, you know, oh, all, all the good stuff. Yeah, yeah all, all the good ones. Um, and then uh, college ended. My uh, friends were much better at talking to girls than I was. So they ended up, you know, getting married. <laughs> right, doing all the grown up stuff. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, they had uh, they had lives that they were living. And right. um, the problem that we were encountering was we all still wanted to play together, but uh, wives, kids, lives tend to add complexities yeah. to schedules. Sure. And it becomes a challenge to find not only a time to play together, but also a game that we can all get together and enjoy. So. I had this idea of it would be really awesome if we had a set schedule. Once every X units of time, we're going to get together and we're going to play a game. Okay. That was the basic idea. Uh, eventually, X became five. So once every five days, mm -hmm. I picked that because, um, you know, number one, it meant you could go as far into the future as you wanted and write onto your calendar, here's game yeah. night days. Okay. Uh, but also because it's five, the day of the week is constantly changing. So sure. If you have you know, choir practice every Wednesday night. Right. It's no problem. You only miss one out of every That's seven. That's right. Your Wednesday that's, folks that's can still join in. Yeah. So um, uh, initially it was just for me and uh, my college friends, uh, my my work colleagues at the time. Um, and uh, it started as just a spreadsheet. Like here's the day that we're going to play. Here's me keeping track of attendance as people come. And it uh, evolved uh, over a sort of iterative process into this kind of more elaborate spreadsheet, which I eventually codified into an app. And I made mm. a fifth of gaming.com where I could host this, okay. where, you know, my friends could log in and they could, uh, they could interact with the site. That interaction included a game selection process where, you know, you got 15 people that are loosely associated and like to play together. How do you find a game that everyone can enjoy? Mm. So I designed and built a nomination slash voting system where, uh, you know, uh, every X units of time, we'd enter a voting phase where, or excuse me, a nomination phase where people would say, here's the game that I think the group should play. Okay. So we'd go into a list of games, then we'd enter a voting phase where everyone can prioritize this. Um, I use a sort of uh, uh, a voting system that's weighted based on their attendance. So the most active mm. players are involved. Okay. So um, you get a little more voice if you show up. That's right. Cool. I which like it. I think is important. Like yeah. if you're never coming, you shouldn't, shouldn't get as, yeah. a, as loud of a say. Um, but also I used a, um, uh, what's it called? Um, where you, you, you don't just pick the one you want, you order your preferences and then, you know, there's multiple rounds, instant like, runoff a, voting. That's what it's called. What, what is it? Instant runoff voting. Okay. So, instant runoff. So I had a, I had a guest on not that long ago, actually, who's involved in the political version of that, the ch choice, uh, rank choice. Yeah. Rank choice yeah. voting. Yeah. So um, you applied that to your gaming app. That's cool. The, the world would be a better place if more governments operated on this, like, you it's a really cool, pro a really cool yeah, concept. It's, it's, it's yeah. cool. It's it's a way of finding the option that the most people can be the most okay with. Right. And yeah. It works perfectly for uh, yeah, yeah for for video game selection. So um, originally it was for just my group of friends, like you know our you know ten people or whatever, uh, and eventually I expanded it such that you could run uh, multiple groups independently on the same site. So you could have these groups that have nothing to do with each other are having their own game nights, their own game selection process, their own scheduling. Um, and that uh, that ran in that mode for se for several years, actually. Uh, fast forward to, I guess, um, three years ago or so, uh, and I started exploring, interacting with the idea of integrating cryptocurrency, Bitcoin yeah. Cash specifically, uh, as a way to um, generate a little bit of revenue from this thing. So, okay. you know, costs hundred bucks a month or whatever to, to host a website. My freeloading friends. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about your costs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about the cost. They're just playing. Um, 
So I was like, it, it would be really cool not only to you know generate a little bit of revenue, which if I'm being asked, I don't care that much about it. it's hundred bucks a month. It's nothing. Sure. Um, but I wanted to explore just to see if I could do it. Uh, can I integrate Bitcoin Cash payments into this app um, natively? So like, and when I say natively, I mean these are actual cryptocurrency transactions. Like I'm reading from and writing to the actual planet scale Bitcoin Cash blockchain. Interesting. So. Um, at the time, there was there was nothing really for this uh, for Bitcoin Cash and and the dev environment for the the tech people who are listening. Uh, it's Microsoft Stack, so SQL Server database, C Sharp, .NET kind of environment. Mm -hmm. I wanted to say okay. like, can I do Bitcoin Cash here? Mm -hmm. um, the answer turned out to be yes, but I was uh, you know when I started my search for this, I was kind of annoyed. Like, why isn't there tooling for this like why isn't there just a library that i can plop in and right and start everything using it? else has templates right, right. like where, yeah. why does this not you exist? know if I, if I want to implement email into a and there's there's 15 libraries that i can just install and mm -hmm. you know new email client okay client dot send email man mm -hmm. there's nothing like there was nothing like that for bitcoin cash mm. one of the things that's interesting about working in a uh um, call it a decentralized environment is um, no one's in charge. So there's no one telling anyone what they need to be doing. Mm, Professionally speaking, as a software engineer, when I'm working, you know, for a client or, you know, on a contract or whatever, there's always somebody who's saying, hey, here's the thing we need to be building. These right. are the goals. These That's are the right. milestones. Go, go make that happen. Right. I'm like, cool. Uh, you know, Bitcoin Cash is a it's a five billion dollar project, and no one's in charge of it. Like, there's no, <laughs> there's no head guy, there's no corporation or federation or anything. Um, whenever somebody has the thought, like, "Hey, this should exist. Somebody should go do this thing." Yeah, that's the sign. Like, okay, you're you're somebody. You're you're the one. Who Congratulations. To, yeah. Congratulations, you're hired. <laughs> uh, you you volunteered. Pay yourself. us whatever you get out of it. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. It's the, it's the joy of contributing. Yep. So I figured out how to do this, this mm. sort of Bitcoin Cash implementation uh, for C Sharp through, um, you know, it, it was some trial and error. I did use a uh, an existing library called nBitcoin, which okay. was um, not Bitcoin Cash specific. It was like many, many cryptocurrency um, projects it supported. But it was also you needed to be very technical to use nBitcoin. Mm. Like you needed to understand how blockchains work, understand fees and UTXOs and transaction mm. construction and encryption. Like you have to understand okay. all that Some in order to use there. it. Yeah. So I figured out how to interact with that layer. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wrote this big, long tutorial, like step-by-step -step instructions. Here's how to implement Bitcoin Cash transactions into C Sharp. And I posted this tutorial and it got some, you know, thumbs up and stuff. Um, and then I, where was this forum? Where, where, where was that? So, so this was about? this was posted to read.cash, which is a okay. social media page that's all about writing articles. Yeah. Also runs on Bitcoin Cash, and you can tip the authors with, you know, that's a cool article. Here's 50 okay. cents, you know, whatever. So that's kind of a crypto community of sorts. Right. Yeah. Crypto community. Um, so I shared that with people like, mm -hmm. hey, you're a dev. You want to, yeah. here's how to do Bitcoin Cash stuff. A friend of mine, uh, actually a colleague of mine from Smart Data named Michael Francis, mm -hmm. said to me, hey, that's really cool, but you should probably... I just traded messages with that guy today. Oh. Inter yeah, he's got an interesting project he's working on. Oh, he, yeah. He, well, if you get If I chance, can get him to make the drive, I might, yeah. I might put him in that seat. Yeah. T yeah. <laughs> tell him to come up. Uh, tell him I'll, uh, uh, you know, buy him lunch and stuff. I'm going to get you, Michael. I'm going to get you. Yeah. He is, he is a lot of fun to talk to. Get him okay. on your show if you can. Okay. He said... Hey, Dave, this is cool, but you should really make a library, like yeah. make, turn this into a NuGet package so that other people can do it without going through your, yeah. your big elaborate tutorial. Yeah. And again, even with my tutorial, you needed to understand the mechanics of blockchains in order to use this thing. Right. So can you productize that is the question. Right. right. Mm -hmm. And and so that's what I did. So I uh, that was that was the origin of the idea for Bitcoin Cash Client, Okay. Um, which is a uh, just say an open source NuGet library. Mm. I took all of the the code involved in interacting with the Bitcoin Cash blockchain, encapsulated in this nice neat package, and it's now up on NuGet.org. Go there, 
search for Bitcoin Cash. Bitcoin Cash Clan will be one of the one of the top results. Uh, at this point, it's been it's been downloaded like four thousand times. So nice. like people are people are using it, which is good. Which is really okay, cool. cool. So um, the idea for Bitcoin Cash Client is someone who is a C sharp dev, so you know .dot net, mm -hmm. uh, could with no knowledge of Bitcoin Cash or blockchains at all, come in here, install this package, you know var client equals new Bitcoin Cash Client client dot new wallet. Bam, there's just like wallet. plugging just in like a calendar that. widget it's, or something, yeah. right? Yeah. If you, I used example of email earlier. If mm -hmm. you have ever implemented an email uh, messaging system, you could do this. No yeah. problem. No problem. Mm. Uh, and of course, there's also a 10 minute demo video on YouTube. So Is there? Okay, Clash well done. <laughs> and it's you know from a blank project. File new project. Let's let's do some Bitcoin Cash transactions. Anyway, that's kind of a tangent uh, as, as sort of a side to the next generation, the next iteration, the next era of a fifth of gaming. Mm. So originally a fifth of gaming was a very social thing. You and your friends just getting together for casual, you know, have some cocktails, play, play Diablo, yeah. you know, a couple hours after the kids go to bed and just unwind with their friends kind of mm -hmm. thing. Uh, <clears throat> I was watching and uh, or listening to an episode of the Bitcoin cash podcast about, I guess it's been almost a year at this point, uh, where they had a guy on uh, who's named Bitcoin Cash TV, who's like a video game streamer who okay. also like reigns Bitcoin Cash, you know, tokens, tokens. on his on his viewers okay. to entice viewership and stuff. <laughs> During their conversation, they had this whole segment. They were they were talking about how cool it would be to have a StarCraft II Bitcoin Cash themed event. So people would come to it, play StarCraft II, have a good time. Winners would get some Bitcoin cash prizes, whatever. Okay. And they were like, that would be awesome. Yeah. And I'm listening to this and I was like, that would be awesome. I wonder if a fifth of gaming would be a valuable tool for that so endeavor. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so something that would like help bring things together What at whatever. At this point, I had uh, implemented a very rudimentary uh, Bitcoin cash setup or a fifth of gaming okay. just as a subscription model. And let's put a pin in this, subscriptions with cryptocurrency. Put a pin in that. If you have time, yeah. this is a really interesting yeah, idea. Yeah, we'll dive into Come that. Come back okay. to this. So I had implemented Bitcoin Cash for a subscription system on a fifth of gaming. Okay. And so when I went to the Bitcoin Cash podcast guy, I was like, hey, here's this app. It's used for organizing video game stuff. It's got Bitcoin Cash integration, so it kind of fit with the whole, yeah. the whole vibe that we're going for. And... Um, his response to that was like, oh, man, this is awesome. I have been thinking that, you know, we need something like this. Like yeah. for a long time, I have wanted this. And uh, the way he was talking about it mm -hmm. made it clear to me that I had not explained very well what a fifth of gaming was. Mm. What it was is just like, hey, recurring automatically scheduled game nights. There's no leaderboards. There's no rankings. There's no auto prize payouts kind of thing it's just about getting groups yeah, together get people together to, to, to share your time that's yeah. all it does so uh you know he was a little disappointed with that and uh okay uh, and he kind of went off his way and i went mine and i was thinking about it over the next couple of weeks and i was like why doesn't it fit how hard is that right that? <laughs> how hard is that do you remember at Smart Data when we did those ping pong tournaments? Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, I was it's pretty crude then. We put it up on the board. Yeah, on the board. Yeah. We we had a tool that we were using once we got kind of refined yeah. at it, which was this website called Challenge. Okay. So think oh the word yeah, that was challenge. maybe right as I around the period yeah. when I left. Yeah, yeah I remember the near, tail it end was of that. near the end. It was near the mm. pinnacle of our ping pong yeah. escapade <laughs> at, at Smart Data. But um, I remember using that tool and being really impressed with, you know, robust brackets and the options yeah. it had supported. True. So I was like, I wonder if they've got an API. And they did. Wow. Okay. So I was like, I wonder how hard it would be to. And so I made a I made a test project. Like, can I talk to Challenge API? Like, what are the things that I would need to do in order to make this happen? Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll need to be able to remotely create brackets, put people in it, do my settings, all that stuff, and check, check, check. I can do all those things. Like, okay, so uh, I now have the tools available for sort of automatically running tournaments. Mm -hmm. I have this platform that I've already built, a fifth of gaming that has support for, 
you know, attendance tracking and creating guilds and yeah. email reminders and all that stuff. It's like game selection. Are your guilds built particular already. groups or is that your playing that right. your yeah, session? Sorry. I, I smuggled a new vocab word in there, didn't I? So <laughs> yeah, a guild is just the name that I gave to these independent groups that are like okay. separate from each a other. Group of users. a dozen friends yeah, that like a dozen play friends, together. That's, yeah. that's a guild. Okay. Um, so yeah, I've got support already built in for that kind of like person management stuff and all the infrastructure stuff, the yeah. database migration, like, you know, everything's already built and ready to go. And I have this Bitcoin Cash client thing, which is for integrating uh, payments, native payments. So I could like build into a fifth of gaming a much more elaborate payment processing thing. Like, mm. you know, uh, this event that happens once every five days. In the past, it was just, hey, come play the game. Now it's, okay, we're making a tournament bracket for this session. Hmm. We're making a new Bitcoin Cash wallet for this session. Interesting. We're, we're putting some Bitcoin Cash money into that wallet as a prize pool. People can register for this event by sending their own Bitcoin Cash in, so that goes into the prize pool, and then now they're they're registered. Sure. And so that idea is one that I started working on, you know, last summer or whatever, and you know, adding all the features, and it was it was a big because I. Guess I when I, when I first thought, I was like, oh, this will be a breeze. Like, I've already got the pieces. And <laughs> like a typical engineer. It's yeah, like typical, you can imagine yeah. it going together, it, so you assume yeah. it's easy. <laughs> and, you know, to be fair, like, I didn't run into any, like, catastrophic problems. It was just the, mat you know, the question of, like, getting everything wired up, you know, finding all the edge cases, ironing out all the wrinkles, uh, while also working full time. This is, yeah, like, yeah. this is right. my free time project right. that I'm doing <laughs> for this. So uh, that's all very exciting. Um, we had a closed alpha that started in September. Okay. Uh, What's which, that mean? Oh, sorry. Yeah. So uh, when you've got a, a product that's on its way to market, oftentimes developers will go through phases mm -hmm. where they're like, okay, we think this works now, but we've only played with it in our dev environment and our sandboxes mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, let's bring some like actual people in and to play with this, but we don't bring everyone in. So we're going to do invite only friends and family yeah. come in and play with this. So I created it's your, it's a pre-launch in the yeah, restaurant world. It's yeah, yeah. All the servers invite their friends and family for sure. the, the, the soft opening. Exactly. Yeah. Soft I opening. Like so mm -hmm. it's friends and family invite only closed alpha. Uh, we had a, I created a new guild specifically for this. Um, and we played magic, the gathering arena okay. it's a card game. Yeah. Um, your, if your audience really is tech, they, they will know Magic the Gathering. This is, uh... My daughter's boyfriend's a big fan. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. Hey, he can come play in the next Okay, time. there you go. Cool, cool. Maybe he already does. I don't know. Hey, maybe, maybe. It's possible. Um, so yeah, closed alpha. We brought, it was like seven people. Um, and two of the people I invited were the Bitcoin Cash Podcast and Bitcoin Cash TV, because those were the two guys who inspired me. I said, okay. hey, come check yeah, this check out. Yeah, check this out. Like, see see okay, how great this is idea. coming along. And uh, <clears throat> it went really well. Like, they were, you know the odd wrinkles that, that you're going to have, the odd mm -hmm. problems that you're going to have in any like The reason test. you set up that environment. Yeah, it's why right? you do yeah. tests is because you know something's going to go wrong and you want you want to see what's, what the problem is. Um, but boy, a lot of people were excited about that. Wow. Like people were... That's awesome. Um, yeah, people were, people were jazzed. And so jazzed, in fact, that I actually had uh, two guys say, we want to work on this with you. Okay. So a couple of friends of mine, uh, old college buddies from my, from my Warcraft days, um, uh, and you know, both one is, you know, really veteran, awesome, next level engineer. One's an aspiring engineer. I was like, come in guys, we're going to, we're going to crush this. So the three of us have been working on it together for about the last four or five months or so. And we do the whole, we've got sprint reviews every week. We set goals wow. for every month and stuff. We're, we're doing it up right. We've got a backlog with the, with the board and everything. We're, we're, <laughs> we're doing it the right way. So, uh, uh, once I was satisfied that the closed alpha was, was, uh, was good. I did, uh, an open beta phase okay. where it's still locked down in the sense that nobody can create their own guilds yet, mm -hmm. but anyone who wants to can join this public guild and we're going to have tournaments every five days. Uh, we had a big, exciting launch. Uh, we had a very generous donation from our mutual acquaintance, Michael Martin. Uh, he was like, he saw my passion and fire. Like I am excited about this. He was like, I'm excited too. Here's a whole bunch of money. Put it in the prize pool. That's awesome. We're going to have a big, we're going to have a big event. Now me, uh, with my intense marketing and outreach naivete, <laughs> was like, we're going to have hundreds of people in this event. It's going to be this giant thing. Um, 
And we did put a lot of work into like reaching out to online Magic the Gathering communities. Okay. But the very common response that we got was, oh, this is a scam. It's obviously a scam. Oh, really? Yeah. Like the the offer I was making was, hey, the buy-in is $1. And if you don't have a dollar of Bitcoin Cash, that's fine. We'll pay the entry fee for you. We're just looking for warm bodies to try this out. The prize pool, by the way, is $800 in cryptocurrency. When people see a big pile of money and the word crypto and it's free, okay, guaranteed. Right, scam. they assume yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, they assume it's, it's a scam. scam. And, and too good to, it felt too good to be true, huh? Too, too good to be true. And and to be fair, they were right to do that. I am a, uh, I have been a, an educator, an enthusiast, um, an evangelist in the cryptocurrency space for ten and a half years now. Mm. Uh, I am, and you're an OG man. I, I am. I, I, <laughs> I do. I do feel That's comfortable. Cool claiming that for myself i am a bitcoin og i was buying bitcoin in 2013. okay um wow so and and, you know not to continue ringing my own bell here but i am if i do say so myself an actual expert on this subject sure go into the cryptocurrency space everyone who has who has a you know youtube video or twitter they call themselves experts they don't know anything right not experts (laughs) but i you know i go to conferences and i teach people yeah here's how you actually understand the technology right i've i've deployed contracts to ethereum created my own cryptocurrencies. I was a miner. I've written this Bitcoin cash client. I understand how this works. Sure. I, an expert, am telling your viewing audience, almost everything in the cryptocurrency space is scam. It's fraud. It's lies. It's nonsense. But so their skepticism made a lot of sense. Their skepticism was justified. And I told them that. Like, I would say, hey, come play in this tournament. They were like, it's a scam. Mm-hmm. I was like, your heart's in the right place. I, you're- <laughs> <laughs> right. Your instincts are right. <laughs> right. But... but Here's my credentials. Here's my resume. Here's the things I've done in the past. Here's links to our closed alpha. You can see this working. You can see the transactions in the blockchain. Come try this out. It doesn't cost yeah. anything. And they're uh, assuming they're going to see a sales pitch or something. Right. Yeah. They're they're they're, they're <laughs> waiting for the you know the, the buy the timeshare or whatever. Right. Buy the timeshare. <laughs> right. My naivete. I was like, we're going to have hundreds of people. Um, we ended up with um, I think twenty eight registered players. Okay. Which. Turned out to be just enough the right to learn amount. from. Yeah, yeah. We, we we learned a lot from that experience. Uh, things went wrong. Like, there were problems along the way. Nothing serious. We completed the tournament successfully. Uh, everyone got paid out, but we saw some errors. We saw like annoying UI problems that we needed to get sorted out. Okay. Um, so we spent the next couple of months after that continuing to have you know test events every five days uh-huh. and continuing to learn. Um, who who participated in those tests? So at at this point, we were in the open beta phase. Okay. So we weren't actively marketing to anyone, but you know, it would come up in conversation. Yeah. I would say, hey, come come play in these things. Sure. And of course we had repeat players, like they had a great time last event, so they wanna they wanna come to okay. the next one. Uh, we had an interesting mix in this big event, because uh, the two groups that I did my outreach to are number one, the Bitcoin Cash community, like, hey, here's this new utility that's using Bitcoin Cash. Yeah come check it out. They just love the novelty yeah. of the, of yeah, the this Bitcoin. New, they thing. see their favorite crypto yeah. being used in the real world and they like that. And then the other communities I was going to is, hey, come play in this Magic the Gathering tournament. Yeah, they're like, sure, the crypto, yeah. whatever. Yeah, try to minimize <laughs> the crypto-ness of it. All right. So the player pool we had was, I'll say, unbalanced with respect to their magic playing abilities. Gotcha. Uh, so <laughs> it sounds big, like the poker games I host over here with some of my tech friends. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have guys, I, how do you play this game? And then <laughs> other guys are like, I'm here to take your money. It's, okay, it's, it's, it's a flop. What's it's flapping? Like, You're right. No, no, it's okay. It's <laughs> right. three cards. And okay. Uh, no, so yeah, that situation. Um, but it was kind of nice because the magic players that came in, this is their first experience with crypto bitcoin okay. cash and of course they won the event they placed really sure, well and so they, they the game yeah and they got coins as a result yeah and i'm like hey here's here's what you can do with those because i'm obviously here's if you want to cash out or whatever if you want to pull it out to your own your own wallet but you could also play in the next event that's coming up in yeah. five days you've got money to, to play with now you're playing with house money so we had some people stick around and, and continue testing that's cool and we learned a lot not only about the user experience um but I also, uh, with this opportunity, with this these active um, events that were happening, Bitcoin Cash was being moved back and forth with my Bitcoin Cash client. Okay. And I found bugs in that, like things that weren't working correctly. Like, uh, like what? So there, there were an assortment of them. Probably the biggest problem that I had was uh, transaction 
broadcasting was unreliable. Okay. So I would I would construct this valid transaction and I would send it out to the world and it would work. It would work most of the time. Most of the time. <laughs> and when you're moving people's money around, it most of the time it's not good enough. Most of the time. Right? It needs to work all of the time. Yeah. And um, with the knowledge that it didn't work all of the time, I designed and built a fail safe system. So this thing that would run this code that would execute once every hour or so would check all of the transactions we recently broadcast. And if it didn't see some of them in the actual blockchain, it'd be like, oh, that must have failed. And it would rebroadcast it. Cool. Now, that's a clunky system. But I built it up to the point that it was very reliable, very polished. The fail safe system, I reached the point where I had really high confidence in this fail safe system. Nice. But. The experience that I was going for for my users is I wanted to, you know, as they're completing the bracket, as they're filling it out, they fill the last, the result of the last match, the grand finals, and then instantly I want everyone across. Cash out, right? Yeah, cash out. Like they all, they they all have their phones sitting on their desks. Yeah. They they hear the chime. They look over and oh, you get that buzz of wealth. Yeah, that fifty bucks <laughs> just landed in my yeah. wallet because I finished third place in the you know the yeah. big, the big tournament. True, that's a that's a great experience to right. shoot for. Yeah, yeah, very very cool experience. And because my system was frequently attempting to broadcast, failing to broadcast, my fail safe would come by an hour later and oh, that failed. Sure. Here, try broadcasting it again. Okay. Okay, that failed too. Okay. And then, so in some cases, hours would go by mm -hmm. and then and then it would work. That's right. not that's yeah. not super cool. I, I want, it's I want not your user cool. experience, yeah, right? Not the user experience I'm looking for. So um, at the time, there were other priorities. I'm trying to get to the point where we can go live with this okay. and allow anyone who wants to to create their own guild. Mm -hmm. um, so lots of other things took priority over figuring out why this delay was happening. It was a low priority because the payments would eventually get there but they weren't instant. Finally, I was like, we need to figure this out. So I knuckled down, I collected all the data from my logs of like, here's, like, can I find a pattern between all these ones that are failing? And what I came to discover was uh, all of the transactions were valid. So, you know, Bitcoin Cash Protocol has rules that you have to follow in order to construct a transaction that the network will accept as yes, this is a good transaction, we'll propagate okay. it around the world. Okay. So I confirmed that I was, there wasn't a bug in my transaction creation, but I was genuinely stumped. I did not know what was going on with this. Okay. The Bitcoin Cash community is very robust and a lot of people in it are very smart. Uh, at the recommendation, uh, actually I think it was the Bitcoin Cash podcast guy again, I was talking to him about yeah. this issue um, because uh, side story, he spun up a StarCraft II guild that was running StarCraft II tournaments. Okay, nice. Which kind of ties in with the start of this yeah, tale of okay. them talking about it'd be cool to do StarCraft. Then. Sure. So he was like, there is a Telegram community called BCH Builders. Okay. Uh, and you can go in there and just listen to people talk. Like it's about two or 300 people in this channel and almost all of them are really smart okay. engineers and almost all of them are experts at the bits and bytes level of a Bitcoin Cash protocol. So I went in there and I, I wrote this like two page, like here's what's going on. Here's all the things I've tried. Here's the patterns that I think I'm noticing, mm -hmm. blah, 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 and the screenshots and you know, all this stuff. And here's, here's like code snippets. You found your hero? And well, so <laughs> yeah, I found the hero. I was expecting this to be the Is launch. Is there a hero among you? <laughs> can, can anyone Save me. figure this out? And you know, you know, and, and, at some level, it was a it was a hit to my pride. Like, here's this yeah, thing that I right. built. I made this from scratch, and there's something wrong with it. And I can't. I don't know what. I don't know what's wrong with it. And you know, I'm with my hat in hand, going to yeah. the big boys <laughs> and being like, "Do any of you know what's going on?" I was expecting this to launch a you know multi hour like back and forth <laughs> troubleshooting. Did you turn it off and turn it back <laughs> on? <laughs> Within level like, zero tech support, solve it or what? <laughs> yeah, I, so you know, to 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 take my uh, my humble pie to mm -hmm. the next level. Within two minutes, a guy was like, "Oh, that's the problem right there." Like that, <laughs> oh that, wow! Like, <laughs> was yeah, it a so, sophisticated problem, or was it a so something you knew better? It, it, it was something new to me. It's okay. something that I I probably should have known about. That's good you asked then. I mean, right. those it's, are, it's, that's, it, that's it, how it was, we learn, and everything we learn is simple to somebody else. And then it's simple to us too. Yeah, now so it's, it's now like, simple to me. Like now yeah. that I understand what the problem was, 
uh, and in front of your tech people interested. The problem was I was using I was using a, the IP address of a seeder rather than the IP address of a node. So the, okay. the, the role of the seeder is like, hey, I talk to this thing, and it will maybe give me the IP address. It will resolve to the IP address of an actual valid node. Um, and the person who responded to me was like, that's not a node. That's that's a that's mm. a seeder. And also, that's a deprecated. Like, no one should be using that for anything. Now, I had found this on, like, this ragtag tutorial from years ago. Someone else had been twiddling with this thing. And I was like, oh, okay. And it, when I would play with it, it seemed to work most of the time. So okay. I was like, oh, this must be good. So I took this thing that seemed to work most of the time and plugged it into the heart of the Bitcoin Cash client, which itself was the heart of the tournament engine of a fifth of gaming. And this thing was not up to the task. Oh, shoot. So the guy who corrected it actually ran a, a node himself. And so as a, as a salute and shout out to him, I took the IP address of his node and it's now what Bitcoin Cash Client talks to. Awesome. Okay. Uh, so for for all of it's going on. So that's cool. That's an example of the kind of problem that I was running into. That's probably the most severe problem that I ran into. Yeah. But there were other like smaller like niggling things like edge cases of transaction sizes and stuff. But um, I'm to the point now where I um, the success rate is 100.0. Like I made that wow. fix okay. and instantly every single transaction succeeded. Happening um, in real time? In real time, like you broadcast Great. the transaction, instantly receive it. And anyone who's interested, I'm talking to you, uh, viewer, uh, <laughs> nuget.org, that's that's the uh, where they have all the libraries. It's open source. Um, Bitcoin Cash Client is the name of the library. And go to YouTube, search for Bitcoin Cash Client. My name, David Chaddock. There's a 10-minute tutorial to follow. You can be broadcasting Bitcoin Cash transactions yourself. That's really cool. So end of last year, 2023, uh, as October through December, we are continuing our progress to get to what I've been calling go live, okay. um, where we want anyone to be able to spin up their own guild. So up to this point, we've got three guilds, Magic the Gathering, StarCraft 2 and Dota 2. Uh, but I want anyone wants to play Apex Legends, anyone wants to play, you know, Team Fight Tactics, League of Legends, whatever, whatever, you yeah. can you can now create your own guild on of gaming. There was a lot of infrastructure administrative -y stuff that needed to be done in order for me to like let go of control and let someone else come in and run their own run yeah. their own guild. And while all this was going on, my friend Josh, one of the two that uh, kind of joined my band of merry men, yeah. uh, he is an aspiring front end engineer. Okay. Um, and so he was like, I want to build a new UI for you. Okay. Uh, part of my backstory, I'm I'm Officially speaking, if anyone asks, I am a full stack developer okay. from from database level all the way to the user experience. I can I can do all of those things if anyone asks. <laughs> in practice, <laughs> in practice, I hate you're really e the bad guy. Yeah. I I am I'm bad at it. I don't like doing it. I just hate it. Yeah. Um. I, I always like when there's someone in my life or someone on my projects who's like I am passionate about cool user experience and cool graphics and animation. Breathe a sigh of relief. You're like, yeah, oh, uh, cool. You're going to carry goodness. that stuff. Okay. I can't stand. You go do that. Yeah. I will, I will give you like anything you need from the back end, from the API, from the database. I will give you those things. You put them on the screen in a cool looking way. Yeah. So while I was going through building out all of the back end components necessary for the go live, he was designing a new front end, like not just like twiddling of what was there and but bring passion to it, like he was yeah. inspired. Bring, by yeah. bring passion to it. We're going to rebuild the UI from scratch. Okay. Um, the UI that was there before, it was like it looked like a high schooler made it as part of their intro to <laughs> right. computer science class. It did not look good. <laughs> um, but if you go to a fifth of gaming .com today, it looks pretty sharp. Now Does it's it? still it's still rough around the edges. We we did our go live on January first of twenty twenty four, and it was two huge step forward. Number one is the um, guild creation. So it's now open. Anyone okay. who wants to can create their own guild. And number two was the go live of the brand new from scratch UI, which was a, a big giant thing in itself. So what I have been doing during the month of January is okay, watching carefully. Is it anything on fire? The transition what's the most important thing to fix. All right, exactly. right. What's the what's the most important thing that we broke during this go live? Thing? Yeah. And there were some problems, but nothing serious. Um, Across the course of my career, one of the smoother go lives that I've that I've ever been on. So that that was really cool. Um, and more guilds have spun up. The, okay. Bit, the Bitcoin Cash TV guy, who I've mentioned a couple of yeah. times, he just recently spun up a chess guild. Really? So, yeah, chess. 
Uh, and one of the things that he wanted to do was he wanted free to play tournaments. Okay. So up until this point, I had designed things such that you have to pay some Bitcoin cash in okay. order to participate. Okay. But he was like, I don't want people to pay. I want to put some money into the prize pool that pays and then just okay. everyone comes in and, and plays. Now, obviously the, the prize pools are much smaller. It's 10 bucks for the whole thing. But, uh -huh. you know, he uh, did his, uh, his first chess uh, tournament was, I think just last week. And he okay. had, I think seven or eight, 10 people, something like that. Nice. Um, and in order to support that, I need to like make a new feature. Like we need to be able to an MIT have the code kind of function. Yeah. Yeah. There, there, you know, everything I built so far operates on the assumption that there's money coming in, mm -hmm. but now the wallet could be empty. We need mm. to handle those kind of situations. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the phase I'm in right now of I'm trying to listen to the users of the site and we're still small. It's our active users are, we hover somewhere between 20 and 30 unique users a month, Okay. Um, which we've officially been alive for one month. So I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm, I'm eager to grow, mm -hmm. which brings me to uh, today. And what do I, what am I thinking about for 2024? Out on the horizon, um, you know, a couple of months from now, I am envisioning, imagining a process we go through where we are trying, actively trying to attract people to the site. Up until this point, we haven't done any marketing. We're not outreaching the communities. We're just building things, watching these tournaments run in an automated way okay. and fixing things and, you know, make sure everything's smooth. Um, but I want to be able to, for example, go to a mid-level magic the gathering streamer on twitch and say hey you should come play in this tournament i will pay your way and hey here's a referral code give this to your viewers yeah and for let's say 30 days after they register on my site you will get the entire rake okay you know th their their entry fee just to encourage adoption or yeah I, I want them to encourage their players to come play in the tournaments yeah and i don't know how familiar you are with like the whole twitch experience i understand but, what it is you yeah. understand what it is yeah um one of the things that um you know a twitch viewer is passionate about your, your average twitch viewer is the possibility of playing with my with favorite that boss twitch yeah. streamer yeah yeah <laughs> that's right so that's the kind of thing that they would enjoy is like sure. hey my favorite twitch streamer is going to play in this tournament over here i could register for the same tournament and if i do well enough yeah maybe I'll i'm be going to i'll way. eventually play against him in the tournament so uh the other thing that we have done for that end is uh, a fifth of gaming already. This is already built in, has a integration with Twitch. So if you register for one of our tournaments and you're streaming while mm. the tournament is running, we will take a thumbnail of your stream and embed it right under the bracket. Interesting, so, okay. Hey, you're a small streamer. You wanna get some clout. Mm -hmm. Hey, there's a 500 person Magic the Gathering tournament on Friday, go win that. Yeah. The list of streams at the bottom of the page as people are eliminated from the tournament, we remove their thumbnail from the, oh, from the stream. Okay. So, sort of the last <laughs> so the winner man gets the big page. Thing. Nice. You, you want to you get some clout? You want to get some more viewers? Come win our big tournament, and your stream will be one of the last people that, one of the last streams, people who are interested in the tournament will come yeah, to watch. Yeah, that's smart. So that's kind of a feedback loop. The people coming in, playing, and like mm -hmm. uh, part of their entry fee going to the streamer is yeah. a feedback loop. Um, uh, there's a lot of like, I don't know, self-reinforcing uh, financials that I think could conceivably be involved in this. Okay. Um, but that's what I see a few months from now is I want to build out the functionality for that. So I'm focusing for on the, the integration. So the Twitch? the Twitch integration is already ready to go. Okay. Um, what I what I w w meant was um, the effort that we we're going to put into outreaching to people. Yeah. Okay. I want tools in place for that. Okay. We have this concept also of sponsorship where if you go to one of our um our tournament pages right now, there's a sponsors in the top right corner. Okay. Uh, for example, I told you Mike Martin was a generous donor yeah. kind of kickstarting the Magic the Gathering Guild Fund. So if you go to a magic tournament today, the digital to DNA logo is right under there okay. under sponsored cool. by. I matched his generous donation, so I also put the a fifth of gaming logo under okay. the nice. uh, under the sponsored by thing there. So, but um, that's a very manual process right now. Okay. Like, if you want to sponsor one of these guilds, you have to talk to me personally. Okay. <laughs> and I have to like manually upload your logo and, and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah. So I want to make the sponsorship Build an thing, interface for that and, look, and make it an interface, yeah. make it automated. Um, the referral link system, I want to make that. Uh, well, so I'm, the I want to build that. players can right. I, I want someone to be able to come to the site and say, "Give me my referral code," 
and we yeah. say, here you go. They copy and paste it and they, they put it into their videos. They share it with their Twitch viewers. Mm -hmm. They put it on their Twitter bio, whatever, um, to, you know, kind of them working for us to bring yeah. people in to uh, play some more. I've also got um, goals around administrative tools, like the people who are kind of running these guilds, giving them uh, valuable tools in their tool belts to um, keep things running smoothly. Um, those are the pieces of the puzzle that I'm hoping to build out over the next few months mm -hmm. before we do this big push to bring people in. Mm. So that's kind of past, present, and future, yeah. at least the immediate future of Fifth Gaming. Distant future, I would love to see this be like the corner of the internet for uh, automated recurring gaming anonymous tournaments. tournaments. Like this yeah. is where you know it's where, uh, where these famous streamers can go to really prove they've got it. Prove they've right? got it. Like um, an another possible aspect of this like a fun to think about aspect of this uh i don't know how familiar you are with the esports scene like pro gamers a little bit yeah i know what it is but not much this is a tough market to break into every every uh high school kid that enjoys playing league of legends like oh man it'd be awesome to right be awesome playing the world <laughs> right. champion. i'm gonna be a pro league of legends player i'm such a good off laner i could totally do it just like every kid shooting hoops in their driveway yeah, wants I'm to be gonna, in the I'm nba, be in the right? NBA. no thing. problem yeah. it's a tough place to break into um if you do not have sponsors you're not making any money like you mm, have to okay like someone has to be bankrolling you to pay your way to you know pay, buy your groceries pay your electricity bill while you're training 12 hours a day at you know the game that you're playing uh in order to make make it to the big times and make yeah. that real money dude you just built the octagon this is this is the ufc right like the world wanted like this no rules whatever you know cage <laughs> fight or whatever and there's these various little pockets of various mixed martial mm -hmm. arts organizations and whatever and what you're envisioning is like I want to be the one that everybody recognizes this brand, yeah. and this is where the fights happen. This is right? where the fights happen. It's just in this case, nobody's breaking their legs, right? You know, yeah, nobody's <laughs> breaking their legs. You, you might get your feelings hurt or whatever, but right. um, yeah, yeah. It's, it's I want it to be something of a proving ground, but it also could conceivably be um, a first step on the journey for an a, an aspiring pro esports player. Yeah. If I don't have sponsors. But I am genuinely really good at Dota. I 2. won that. Right? Yeah, you've got. Hey, here's this. Here's this Dota Two tournament. Me and my squad. Well, the the UFC has that reality show where people go and they have eight people that duke it out, and you can win on the show. Right? Oh, is that a thing? Yeah, I, it's I like the that. Bachelor or whatever kind of thing. But they actually, <laughs> you know, punch each other's face in and stuff. And cool. I, I forget Ultimate. I don't know what I forget the name of the show, but there's actually been a few, uh, you know champs or you know really good performers like, who've come out of the show it. right yeah oh that's awesome so yeah I, I see it yeah i i love that 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 aspect of like proving ground mm -hmm. get started but also from a very like practical sense hey i'm you know it's just a, a poor college kid i don't even have a job but i want to spend time playing this game so i can get better and, and make a serious run at it yeah here's this tournament it's a ten dollar entry fee and hey, I did really well because I'm awesome and I won 300 bucks. Mm -hmm. That's groceries for the week. I'm all set. I can keep training. I can keep practicing. And there's another tournament in five days. I'm going to do this again. Yeah. So again, this is this is a pipe dream. This is distant future. Maybe, maybe pipe dream is not the right word. This is this is the goal. This ambition, is what I see yeah. on the horizon. This is the dream I have for it. Yeah. It's um, not it's not fantasy. It's just ambitious. Yeah. yeah. It's ambition. Yeah. It's not mm -hmm. it's not completely ridiculous or anything. I could right. see us where where this happens. Um. The other piece of the puzzle is, as far as I know, nothing like this exists. Mm -hmm. um, and that kind of brings me to, you know, why I have been doing all this. Like, the, that's the first reason is I want a platform like this to exist because I want to play on it. But right. as far as I know, there isn't one. There are there are social community platforms that are built around tournaments, but none of them do crypto pay like buy ins and mm. payouts and stuff. No one's done that integration yet, but I've done it. Mm -hmm. So if anyone wants to, to do that. Hey, I've I've got the site, the yeah. one site that exists that you can do that. It's here, fifthofgaming.com. Speaking of like past, present, and future, in the past, like what inspired you or comp what compelled you to integrate Bitcoin Cash into your operation? Sure. Why, why was that important to you? This is the first question in a long, winding, multi-hour conversation about <laughs> the currency, <laughs> cryptocurrency space. I will give you the very abbreviated, okay. uh, very abbreviated story of my my history with Bitcoin. So, my enthusiasm for Bitcoin stems from my uh, my general distrust of the government. I've, I I consider the 
the U.S. dollar and all fiat money systems to just be a really complicated system for people with power to steal from people without power. Yeah. People who have the money yeah. printing button steal from everyone for themselves. Sure. For themselves. Uh, Bitcoin is a solution to a long. I don't think list anybody's excited about central bankers getting rich right. on us yeah, just for existing. Bankers, yeah. Right? It's, it's the government. <laughs> it's the politicians. It's the bankers. They they make all the money and and we suffer for it. Um, that's that's its own long <laughs> <Right>. conversation. Um, <laughs> But suffice to say, Bitcoin, that is to say, the Bitcoin that's described in the original white paper mm -hmm. um, is the solution to a long list of serious problems. Mm. Um, and I have a whole backstory about like my how I came to have the understanding of the money supply that I have today, which stems from my time in the world of Warcraft. Mm. It's a long story. Any interested viewers, check out episode 94 of the Bitcoin Cash podcast. Okay. Get, get my entire... My entire backstory from that. Cool. But uh, from the years 2013 to 2017, I was an enthusiast of Bitcoin, mm. uh, Bitcoin BTC. There was a long series of events that came to be known as the block size war mm. or the Bitcoin civil war, whatever you want to talk, whatever you want to call it, where um, there was a debate about how Bitcoin should I don't know, grow into the future. It's basically a battle for the soul and direction of Bitcoin. Okay. On one side, you had people that were like, we need to make sure that this does not grow. We want to make sure that no one can use it. We need the blocks to be very small. Mm. It's utterly unusable for anything in the real world. And then you had the other camp that was like, we need this to grow. And it needs to be like this user experience of instant and free transactions yeah. you need to be able to drive through mcdonald's and with your bitcoin right, right? buy a coffee mm -hmm. buy a buy an egg mcmuffin with bitcoin that mm -hmm. is that's the winning formula like if bitcoin is going to become usable uh or used on a large scale if it's going to become a global reserve currency which is mm -hmm. kind of the vision that the community had at the time um people have to be able to use it it has mm -hmm. to be instant and free so these are the two camps the good guys and the bad guys. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it, it is a it is a long, terribly aggravating story. Yeah. Uh, but the in short, the bad guys won. Okay. The the enemies of Bitcoin captured it in 2017. Most of the people in cryptocurrency today uh, don't know that this happened. Hmm. They think that Bitcoin is still like, oh, the people's money. It's freedom. It's you're I sticking see. it to the man. You're not. Bitcoin was captured by the bankers. You know, seven years ago. Interesting. It's, it's, I didn't it's know dead. that. Yeah, and most most people don't like mm -hmm. it's. Um, again, long story. There was aggressive censorship of all the largest forums. Character assassination. They have a carefully constructed narrative, and um, again, long story. We'll, we'll be here all day if I yeah, <laughs> get right, that rabbit right. hole. Um, I mean, it's the history of you know war in the Middle East, right? Right. I mean, it's, it's just, yeah. It's you, you could go and you could go on and on about it. There, right. It's it's a really interesting story. If you want more about that. See episode 100 of okay. the Bitcoin Cash podcast. Okay, cool. Um, but anyway, uh, the end result of the Civil War was there was a, a what's called a fork where Bitcoin broke into two different chains. They share a history, but they have different futures. Okay. One is Bitcoin, still called Bitcoin today, and the other one is called Bitcoin Cash. Bitcoin Cash is the project that is still pursuing the original goal of the white paper. Okay. If you look at the white paper, the title is Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer so electronic a Protestant. cash system. You're a Protestant in the in the religious right. analogy, right? <laughs> exactly. That's exactly right. Bit, Bitcoin is Catholicism. No, we're breaking off, making our own thing, but this is how it was originally supposed right, to be, exactly. right? And, and fun fact, I am actually a Protestant. Okay. In real <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. Absolutely. Spot on. It makes sense, though. I mean, you have the yeah. same history, but you have different same futures. Same history, but sense. different futures. Mm -hmm. um, and I have contributed my efforts you know, this is, and then this is like, this is my, my free time, you know, I don't want to be too dramatic about it, but this is, this is basically become my life's work is, is pushing this forward, making people aware of it, building okay. tooling forward and, and so forth. Um, in order to reach that goal of peer to peer electronic cash for the world that everyone can use for free, no one controls it. No one can seize your funds. No one can stop you sending money across borders. If someone, if the bank doesn't like what you're buying. Tough beans, right? You know, <laughs> if the if the tyrant dictatorship government doesn't want you sending money, tough beans, right? They can't stop it. That's that's the goal that I'm that I'm interested in. Okay, Bitcoin Cash, believe it or not, and this is another thing that most people in the cryptocurrency space don't know. Bitcoin Cash is by far the best in the space. At okay, that. interesting. It's the largest, 
zero conf transactions, instant and free anywhere in the world. Um, and it's got a robust development community. Now, there are others. I don't want to create the illusion that Bitcoin Cash is the only one. Okay. But it is the king of that space. Interesting. Um, Monero is another big one that I really like. Okay. Monero has a um, an intense emphasis on privacy. Okay. So who you're transacting with, the amount being transacted, all that stuff. Monero is the king of that. Uh, Bitcoin Cash is sort of the king of peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash. As Interesting. It's okay. So that's why Bitcoin Cash. Bringing that all back to your original question, why did I pick Bitcoin Cash? Yeah. It's because I had a very specific set of needs for a fifth of gaming. Yeah. Those transactions have to be instant and free. So gotcha. I need a thing like Bitcoin Cash. And then... You, you also know, have a principled interest, also have a principled in, the interest in the success of Bitcoin Cash. In the success of Bitcoin Cash. Okay, so, cool. Uh, a fifth of gaming serves as... Uh, a way to introduce people to yeah. this technology exists now. Sure. You can use it today. It's instant and free, easy to set up. In the profile of your uh, fifth of gaming, uh, your user profile, there's a button there that says, "How do I get Bitcoin Cash Wallet?" Yeah. You click that link, pop up. It's two steps. It's incredibly easy. It's free. There's no registration. There's no account creation. There's no subscription. You just instant and free. So that's why. That's, that's cool. Why, that's why Bitcoin Cash. I like what you said too about your kind of vision for marketing and expanding the use or the uh, you know the adoption of of fifth gaming. What's what's first? Like, what do you have to do next? Like, when you sit down to your at your computer for the next time, what are you thinking about accomplishing in order to get there next? I mentioned there were some administrative -y tools, okay, uh, that are currently missing. So when you think about running a tournament, there are there is an expectation among the players of your tournament that you will have policies in place for, you know, here's how long matches last and here's mm. how turn how, how uh, disputes are resolved. And okay. here's, you know, payout information. And here's who to contact if blah, blah, blah. Um, so right now, there is no way for admins to be able to like write down, like put yeah, that there's no dungeon have master. Posted. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's no dungeon master yet. So um, I, I did just recently, like within the last couple of weeks, finish building an integration into fifth of gaming for discord servers and channels okay so every guild can have their own discord channel that's specific how, how does to that them. help well so it gives a a chat window embedded on the page with the bracket i see okay where tournament participants can talk to each other nice. like hey we're starting in x minutes or whatever or hey yeah. This person is delayed they'll be here in 10 minutes like that kind of stuff is okay. just a, a place for communication before there was nothing we had our own Discord server linked, and they could, in theory, go there and like, hey, is anyone here from tournament whatever for this? But now they've got their own space. Um, so those kinds of things I could see being uh, stumbling blocks for someone who's, hey, this is a cool idea. I want to spin up a guild for this, but hey, how do I communicate with my people? Like, where, yeah. where do I put in this? So that's an example of something that needs to be okay. um, put in place. But I'm actually kind of looking for guidance from my user. So I just yesterday had a conversation with a uh, Bitcoin Cash TV guy about like, here's his experience, and here's the problems that he's have, and I'm gonna make a couple of changes based on his feedback. I had a guy reach out to me from Colorado, who's like, hey, I run this veterans gaming group uh, out there, Colorado Springs by the Air yeah, Force Academy. Yeah. Um, and we're interested in using it for gaming for our events. Okay. So I had a really interesting conversation with him about like, the differences between what he's looking for and what a fifth of gaming offers today. Okay. And that's like, okay, there's more you items for the helps you prioritize your the backlog, backlog, right? Yeah, prioritize yeah. things. Uh fun fact, one of his, he the way he described it was his his best friend in real life, this guy named CJ, uh just this last year launched a new customizable card game called Mithril. Okay. Uh, he was he had a Kickstarter and everything, and this nice. is this is actually a, a successful, like they've launched and everything. Um, and I was like, oh, I'm sure this will be like a small potato thing, but I went to Steam and like, they've got an act, like it's an actual really? game okay. on Steam. You can go play it right now. <laughs> nice. Got a good following. So I, huh? I reached out to, to these people and I started looking around on their site and, uh, they actually had a section for tournaments, tournament events that was like a ghost town. Like they hadn't had any events in months. And I asked them like, why, like what happened with this? Why'd you guys stop doing tournaments? And I was like, oh, the, the guy who ran these events, um, just stopped showing up one day. Oh, I was like, wow. oh, okay. Wouldn't it be nice if you had there's some ecosystem that there's just an ecosystem that just automatically anybody can yeah, up. anyone anyone yeah. sets it up, it's free. It just automatically runs the tournaments for you. Yeah, you don't have to do anything. It just happens. Um, so 
that's this is another example of like people that I'm talking to. Like, what would you want from something like this? What do you? Mm. What's missing that that you that's stopping you from just jumping with both feet and and uh, going with this? So, to so answer your question so you, about what's coming up coming up next. I don't know exactly. You got to prioritize your backlog with a few more conversations. Right, a few right? more conversations. Mm-hmm. I've got. I've got my list of things, like the referral code thing I mentioned, the sponsorship thing, Mm -hmm. the administrative tools. But I'm also trying to be very careful to have an ear to the ground with the people who are actually using the site or interested in using the site with what do they what do they want? What's missing in their eyes? That makes sense. Yeah. Let's see how that goes. So if if people want to join a guild today, where do they go? A fifth of gaming dot com. Spelled out. It's all one word. A F I F T H O F. G A M I N G dot com. Nice. Okay. I think I spelled that right. Uh, fifth of gaming dot com. So if you get to the home page, there's two buttons. One says events, the other says guilds. Okay. If you click the events button, you will see the list of all of the upcoming tournaments. Okay. Um, if you go there today, you'll see Magic the Gathering, you'll see StarCraft 2, you'll see Dota 2, you'll see chess. And they're small events, like you know. They I, all I, have tournaments planned. Yeah, they're, they're, they're all, all it's, it's all automated. Stuff going on. It, it okay. happens automatically. These events are scheduled. You can go register for them right now. Okay. Um, if you're interested in those games that I just rattled off, yep. go join a tournament. Okay, nice. And, and honestly, if you're interested in supporting this project, that's one of the best things you can do. Even if you're bad at StarCraft, you're bad yeah. at Magic. Just come play in the events. The more people who are just playing, jump in, get your ass yeah. kicked, and give a little feedback. Yeah. Right? Little, <laughs> give me some feedback. Yeah. Let me know what you let me know what you thought. What was cool? What wasn't cool? But also just. When people come to a page, they want to see other people there before mm. they jump in and do it themselves. If it's okay. a ghost town, they're like, well, I'm not going to, I don't want to play. There's no, there's no one here. Right. It's empty. <laughs> so, um, you know, on average, our Magic the Gathering tournaments are a handful of people, three or okay. four people. The more people that come in, the more elaborate the brackets get, the more... The more fun it is. Yeah, the really. more fun it is. Yeah. The more prizes get paid out. So if okay. it's if it's three people... Only the, the winner gets paid out. If it's yeah. four, the top two. Okay. If it's six, the top three get paid out. And, okay. and this this proceeds like that. Nice. Uh, so that's one way is go there and you join know, an existing jo- event. join an existing event. Okay. If you don't want to play any of those games, but you're like, oh man, I am just the bee's knees at Go or whatever, I don't right. know, whatever <laughs> you know, whatever your game is, you're a Valorant or you know League of Legends <laughs> right. or Apex Legends, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I really want to play in a tournament for this game, but there's no guild for it. Create your own guild. Okay. The the two buttons I mentioned, the other button is the guilds button. Click the guilds button. You'll see the list of all the existing guilds and the games that they're playing, how many people are in them. Uh, but you also see a button that says create guild. Uh, creating a guild doesn't cost anything. The first three months of your subscription are totally free. Okay. Um, and uh, all you have to do is tell us what is the name of your guild? What time of day do you want to play? Like 7 p.m. Eastern okay. time, for example, is what Magic the Gathering plays. You don't need to pick a date because, again, a fifth of gaming handles pick an all that stuff. Of some yeah, sort. You, you don't even pick the interval. We okay. do the interval for you. It's, it's okay. still five days. Nice. And that's, that might be configurable someday, but for now, it's once every five days. Right. And then pick the game. There's an interface. Click, search for the name of the game. Uh, it's integrated with IGDB.com. Okay. So any game you want to, if it exists on IGDB.com, it's a multiplayer online game. You can pull you can in. you can pull it up in a fifth of gaming and start a guild for that. So nice. Spin up your own guild. It's got. Uh, can unique... you share a link with friends or yeah. whatever and say, "Hey, join my yeah. guild" or whatever? Give them, give them the link. You can you can email them links uh, or excuse me, you can email them invites from the admin page. Okay. So that's all built in. Um, and then you can also there's a there's a link you can get. It's like fifthofgaming.com slash session slash next and then slash your guild ID. Okay. Bookmark that. It will always take you to whatever the next event, the okay. one coming up is. Nice. So give that to your friends, and they can always pop in at the the next t- uh, tournament. If they're not Bitcoin Cash enthusiasts, that's okay. We have step by step. Like you come to the page. Hey, in order to join this tournament, you need to join the guild. Click join guild. Craft them a wallet okay. right there on now, site. Huh? Right. Exactly. <laughs> now, now you're in the guild. Oh, you need to put your Bitcoin Cash wallet in. Click here to go there, and so it okay. takes you there. How do we get a Bitcoin Cash wallet? Click. Here's the here's the two step two minute process for getting for free a Bitcoin Cash wallet. Okay. You don't need Bitcoin Cash. You just need the wallet. Okay. Um, you know if it's free to play. If if it's pay to play, then you will need get a few bucks of Bitcoin Cash from okay. Coinbase. Okay. Nice. So that's how to get started in a fifth of gaming. Uh, if if any of your viewing audience is interested, and we would love to have you. More, the more the merrier. Sounds like fun, man. Yeah. I, oh. I I'm having a blast with it. I mentioned reasons I made this site. One of them is because I wanted to play in the tournaments. 
now I play in the tournaments. Uh, I just played Magic last night. I think as a founder, when you're building something that you wanted to exist and you needed, right. um, it, you know, it provides a little fuel mm -hmm. to the project, right? It's, it can drive uh, great results. It can also blind you a little bit if you're building all of your you know, right. you know, functions and features or whatever. Yeah. So it's, I, I love that you're, you've got your ear to the ground and you're listening to other users about how they'll take advantage of it. There have been changes in direction of like certain certain features that I wasn't planning to build or certain yeah. ways of approaching things that I wouldn't have done. You can't make it just your product. Right, right. yeah. <laughs> you so, need a community. Someone said to me, you know, hey, this thing is weird like this. It, sh it shouldn't do this. It should do this other thing. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, it is weird. Okay. It, sh it should <laughs> yeah. do it this other way. Okay, yeah, we're gonna do it that way instead. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. And that's, I mean, that's important for any, any project, is. like get something in front of people, iterate on based on their feedback and, uh, and eventually you'll look up and like, wow, this thing is really smooth and slick and yeah. it's got what people need in it. All right. Well, I appreciate you being on this show and good luck in your, uh, your growth as you kind of go to market yeah. and spread the, spread the word to the bigger user base. Yeah. It has been, uh, it has been a delight chatting with you. Thank you for this, uh, this platform and, uh, uh, yeah, always good to chat with you, Aaron. You too, man. Thanks.